Today, we're at the 28th episode of the Ibrahim and Kai podcast. We're going to be talking about NFTs, and there's actually a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. Just this morning, which we're going to talk about a bit later, Nike just bought a pretty big NFT company. It's not even an NFT company. I shouldn't even call it an NFT company, but it's basically a company that makes stuff for the metaverse and NFT, which we're going to talk about later. Mm -hmm. uh, so how, how should we begin? We should we first talk about the the question, the topics, right? The topics, right? The the art. Should we start with the art ones? But I think uh, so. Before we begin, I just want to preface this: like this is not a usual NFT topic, right? Because a lot of people might be listening to this and like uh, be like, "Oh, these guys are talking about oh, yeah, NFTs exactly, now." Exactly. And, uh, you know, they don't know that. what the heck they're talking about. So this is not an usual NFT topic. We know that this topic is like totally saturated and it's been discussed a lot of the times on the internet. In fact, there are millions, like, like there are a lot of videos online discussing and articles about NFTs and it's very saturated nowadays. And so we're more like diving into like interesting, unique subtopics about NFTs that are kind of happening right now and what we think is going to happen in the future. So yeah, I just wanted to say that before we begin. Uh -huh. Totally, man. We're not like we're not in. We, we didn't buy NFT. Like we're not doing all of yeah, the NFT yeah. stuff. But honestly, I would say that I am really following what's going on with NFT. But it's mm -hmm. just like I, Likewise. I'm not buying it just because I feel like it's important to know about it. But it's not yeah, necessarily 100%. that you're inside the game. You know, I'm kind mm -hmm. of just like watching everyone going on, but I'm not yeah, inside yeah. it. Inside of it, because I feel like. If I'm ever gonna be inside an NFT, I want to go like almost full time. I don't want to be like, just do it when I feel like doing it. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I agree. Yeah. And I think, I think it's, it's, it's it's really important yeah. to to dive in why NFT even blow up in the first place. Because as yeah. far as I know, it started to me at least when. Beepo, he sold his, that that one for like sixty nine million dollars, right? Which is an NFT art. And you actually brought up this question, which I haven't really thought about it. It's like why, mm -hmm. among all of the categories in NFT, the art sector of NFT is the one that's been talked about the most, right? Yeah. And one thing that I I feel like it's so, it makes sense. It's like because of the metaverse, because when the metaverse is being built. Although it's like full of a uh, full of coding and all that stuff, but visually and it, like the metaverse is a very like beautiful world. It should look good, right? So it's all mm -hmm. about art. Like everything you see inside should be made by an artist some way or like one way or another, right? So, it's kind of like a game, right? Everything exactly, is designed exactly. in a way. So it, it requires like full design, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred yeah, like, percent. What, what do you think about yeah. it? So, okay, I think like also uh, that the metaverse is like partly that, like why everything like inside the metaverse is like design and everything is like kind of artsy inside, yeah. right? And, and people want to express themselves in an artistic way. But I also think that the reason like NFTs have gained uh, more traction than other kinds of art NFTs have gained more traction than other kind of kinds of NFTs is mainly because like... Um, because like art in a way serves two purposes as an nft right the first one is that art is like gripping and visual right like you can look at it and you can contemplate it and it's very pleasing to the eye to look at right yeah. you find pleasure in looking at it. and the second thing in a sense it's displayable right unlike other nfts like there are like memes nfts that have been sold for like hundreds of thousands of dollars oh, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. mm -hmm. but but the difference between them and art nfts is that art nfts is something like you can print for instance like you can be a proud of and you can display in your uh profile right mm -hmm. and it's not just for the sole like uh selling purpose of it right and it, it kind of serves two functions one of them is like owning the nft owning the art owning that thing that you want and at the same mm -hmm. time being proud and liking what you own, right? Because NFT is art and people like that in a sense, right? Yeah. And that is like, that would be my explanation, you know? 
and also i think like the nft market is mainly saturated with artists we we see a lot of artists nowadays like they are, they call themselves nft artists and they create art this is like uh, literally just a new for word the sake right of it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah this nft artist word just came out like last year or, or even this yeah. year right yeah 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 and it's almost like this person's job is to create nfts it's like this is how like i perceive it even though they're still like a uh, normal artist yeah, yeah. but yeah, but again, like artists are producing the most amount of NFT uh, NFTs, and so when you open like websites like uh, Foundation App or like OpenSea, and you the majority of the works that you see there are like uh, like artworks, right? Whether 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 that is three D or uh, photography or like some sort of like designs, gifts, like it's very uh, it's very artistic there, you know. And so like artists have adopted this trend and adopted this movement and kind of uh moving like moving forward with it and selling and trading and exchanging and all of that stuff it's it's like a very visual se- like industry like right? it's all about uh-huh. the visuals and, and yes i heard someone said something like this which I, I find very interesting he said the one who has the last mm-hmm. nft like who owns the nft who didn't sell the nft Right, because someone has to own the 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 last sale of the NFT, right? Like I sell it to you, you sell it to someone else. Like they always has to have someone who has it at the end, right? And yeah. they said that the one who has the NFT at the end is the loser. But which I kind of I, I thought about it. So I feel like people, all of this hype about NFT is yeah. just about making money. The more I think deeper deep into it i feel like it's not necessarily just about the money although a lot of people said it's just about the money like i buy this yeah. artwork just so i can hold on to it and until this artist become famous i can resell it but besides money what more can you gain out of this nft in the real world so if you look at what can you do with the nft i, I look at some some of my other friend who owns an nft Besides selling it and make money, he used this as a leverage to get access to certain networks. So he, he okay. bought an NFT and so he he was able to join another community of people who owns the same NFT. And then he, he mm. get to talk to someone that he really want to talk to who owns the same type of N- NFT that he owns. So let's say you there's like this uh, community for what was it called the the crypto punks or something like that was it called yeah yeah yeah. punks right and maybe there are someone who you want to talk to and you want to get get connection with him and so if you you also own a crypto punk like him then you have something in common then you can get into the connection that's just one way of seeing it but i do see people use it as a leverage to get to expand their network so i don't think money was the only thing to to use like to to benefit from from owning an nft you can keep it almost forever mm-hmm. in a way i feel like yeah that's a very interesting point so you use it as a way to network right because you have a, a crypto punk nft and then you meet up with these other guys that have crypto punks nfts and then you start to meet trade and uh learn more about like other nfts as well and so it's more like a grouping and community that is formed uh through 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 the through like the crypto punks nfts um, which is quite interesting, actually. You just get the benefit, like any way you can from the NFT. You, yeah, you cannot, yeah. You shouldn't limit yourself just by the the cryptocurrency that you can gain by reselling it, which is what most people are doing from from what I see. But I don't see. I I don't. I feel like there's a lot more potential to it because, for example, I feel like the the art NFT. Mm-hmm. It is gonna replace the purpose of social media in a way when, when you look at social media especially like instagram yeah. what you're looking yeah. for is followers and likes especially as an artist we talked about it many episodes before like mm-hmm. we're not getting maybe enough followers or, or, or likes on instagram right and then uh, instagram doesn't have a very good algorithm algorithm to promote artists right now right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. artists what we're looking for is to have more exposures to promote our work right and having an nft I feel like it, it kind of served the purpose of what we wanted what we wanted from from social media before. Like if I wanted a job or if I wanted to work with a certain client, I would say, "Hey, I have like 10,000 followers on Instagram, you know, a lot of likes. 
ten thousand likes per per post back then. But now maybe you can say, hey, I've sold five NFTs, which are like my photos, right? And I have this community based on my NFT works. And so kind of using it as a leverage again to get more connections or more benefits for yourself. And the way you're using it as a leverage is almost the same way you're using it when back then, like social media with likes and followers. Do, do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's like, yes, bro, it's a different that is, thing, but that is insane. It's more like a, a proof, right? Like yeah, if yeah. you want to, if you want a brand to work with you, like, okay, here's the proof that my artworks have sold for this amount of money. And this is what I am worth. And this is like, I have, I have an evidence, I have visual evidence of that, that like multiple pieces that I made have been sold and uh, a lot of people have owned it. And so my work has a market value, you know, it, exactly. it has a value exactly. That's the, the market, market value. People, yeah, approve mm. it. So that is, that is very, very good point. And it actually has uh, more security because technically you could buy followers and buy likes on social media, but with NFT, since it comes with blockchain, even like for example if someone want to check your and if your nft is legit or not they could they could check it you know it, it's it's a it has more guarantee i would say than yeah, just yeah, like pre yeah. purely likes and followers yeah because because uh, like there has been uh, like this debate about likes and followers that you know are they authentic uh, what about engagement how do how much do people care about your instagram page you know so if we do uh, like if we uh work with this, like if brands work with this influencer, then will they be able to, is that like, is the traction that that influencer has authentic and true, you know, while with NFT, you don't have that kind of doubt. You're, you're very much sure that this guy has sold, you know, uh, his work to that number of people and his work has this kind of value. And it, it removes this kind of friction exactly. between the brand and There's the NFT artist. There's not followers. There's actually money going on. Because if yes. you see this guy, like people are willing to pay like ten, twenty thousand dollars for artwork, it yeah, means that yeah. he could worth much, much more than just just those numbers, you know? Yeah, it's a proof. Because art is just so subjective, you know. For especially for clients, if we want to put ourselves mm -hmm. in, into the shoes of clients, they have no idea because it's like it, since it's so sub subjective, they just mm -hmm. want to make sure if people actually like your stuff. And yeah. NFT is kind of like a proof that people are such a big fan of yours to the point that they're willing to you know pay this amount just to mm -hmm. own like a jpeg yeah file of your work right that that's the that, yeah. that's how i see it dude 100 100 percent um but i i also yeah it, it kind of like buys this uh this confidence right and like i said it removes the friction between you and the client um which is i think like I, I really wanna I don't wanna hold on this very too long. Um so I think like we should move to the next topic, which is like um uh, how is NFT going to affect filmmaking and photography in the in the future? You know? Mm -hmm. How is the NFT market uh influenced photographers now? And like what do you think is it going to do with like to that like kind of um uh, field, you know, to this field, the creative field in general actually. Uh, in the future, I, I feel like it has a lot to do with the. When we talk about NFT, it's just ho so hard to not connect it to the metaverse because I, I feel like the ultimate. Yes. This stage of like, I, I'm going to answer the question a bit later, but like this stage of NFT, I feel like it's just literally the beginning. Like you're not even entering the tunnel yet. It's mm -hmm. just like the beginning of it. Like the whole pur mm -hmm. purpose of NFT eventually, it's going to be in the metaverse because when you're at the metaverse, there's no laws, there's no rules, right? So you need something yeah. to, to put on a limit. You need to put on like a, like a cap on, mm -hmm. on everything, right? If everything is just like unlimited, there's no value to it. So NFT is kind of putting values, you're putting limitations to, to digital assets. So back to the question, like filmmaking and, and photography, I feel like there's so many space for filmmaking and photo photography to grow because I, you kind of just bring in all of the skills that you had in the real world and just apply it inside mm -hmm. the metaverse. So you can still very much do works in the mm -hmm. metaverse and then you just put an NFT, you connect it to an NFT. And so this work, you kind of like, they'll know who did this work without copying it or without like distributing it without limits. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure about it, but I feel like NFT is just to protect us. It's not really there to like the, the main thing which people always talk about is making money. I feel like NFT is there to protect us as an artist is because they're trying to give our artwork like a scarcity. You know, it's like not to, to, yes. to abuse yes. it, to prove Dude, who, uh, who did the work, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. I think like, w- like when we talk about like this idea of like NFT and filmmaking or NFT and photography, right? It's yeah. almost like you have to go back to the basic idea of like, what is the purpose of NFTs, right? Yeah. Which is like, why are they a thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, th- there are th- NFTs are a thing is because they are based on the idea of scarcity, like you mentioned, yeah. right? Counter to the infinite reproduction of visual imagery that we were witness, like that we are witnessing nowadays, they're mm-hmm. kind of uh, like flipping the infinite to finite. They're finiting the infinite. Right. Yeah. So for, like nowadays you, you, you post an image on Instagram, you know, you get a couple of likes and, um, um, and, and that image like ha- has kind of like a life cycle. Right. Mm-hmm. And also almost, almost like you have to move on to the next one, yeah. you know, and there's like an infinite game that you're playing that you're constantly producing, producing, producing. But like, what if I actually care about this image and I wanted to have some sort of a value, you know, and NFT kind of. Um, with the reproduction of this image, like in, you can see like these images in this digital age that we're living in where you can see thousands and thousands and millions of images, it's almost like each image has a certain value. You know, you're putting mm-hmm. a certain value in the image. Yeah. So like when you hash that image and kind of mint it, it's like this is the only image that you can own. And this image is really, really valuable. Like whether it's a photograph, a film, an artwork, or uh, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like NFTs provide gives values uh, to that, and it's going to do that in the future through this kind of idea of scarcity, right? Yeah. And like when things are rare and you cannot reproduce them or duplicate them, then they're more valuable, right? Because they, 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 this is the only thing that you have, you know. And also, I think one more point that we should never forget is like this idea of fractionalization of work artworks right so oh, yeah. in the yeah, future yeah. yeah let's say you have a film like you made a film right mm-hmm. and a lot of people are going to be able to own a piece of that film what mm-hmm. if they can own scenes from that film you know like that is freaking crazy what if you like this scene from that movie and mm-hmm. you want to own it you know and you kind of have an nft of that scene in that movie you know this is actually something that i, I literally thought about right before we started the podcast because yeah remember uh we, we were talking about what's the difference between nft and uh, stocks market right mm-hmm. and the name is in is inside already like non-fungible tokens right and yeah fungible is, is kind of like it, it means that the the unit is is um how can i ex- explain when when something is fungible it means that the unit is like the same as another you get mm-hmm. it like one dollar yeah. is the same as another dollar yeah. Right, but NFT is non fungible, right? So one NFT is different from another NFT. Yeah. But if you said that you can own a piece, like a thousand piece of one work, doesn't that make it fungible then? Because a thousand they, piece of one work, they said that the difference between NFT and stock mm. is that stock is fungible and NFT is non fungible because one stock of Tesla is the same as another stock of Tesla. Yeah, that, but that, actually, yeah. Yes, but here it's more like a share, I think, right? Like, like you, when you own that scene, then you're the only one who owns that scene from the film. I, I don't, but th- that's the thing. Like, I don't know what does that mean to share an NFT? Because oh, what about a photo then? Do I own a pixel of it then? Like, do I, what, what do I mm. own from this photo? That's like, actually an interesting point, yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like, okay, this photo is shared by a thousand people. So everyone has this photo or is it like, I have this part of this photo and you have that part of this photo? What, what does that even okay. mean? That, that's a good point, I think, but you can look at it from another perspective, which is like, there are only these four people who own this photo. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree with that, but I feel like that makes it non-fungible. Uh, that makes it fungible because four people has the same NFT. Yeah, but, but only four people have, no, they don't have the same NFT. They own a part of that NFT. So you don't have the whole thing. You have a part of it. Okay, it's so a difference what's the between difference having... between that versus, let's say, 10 million people own a part of Tesla? Well, like owning a part of Tesla is like... Owning I, one stock I think, of Tesla. 
Like yes, but okay, I think that's a good point. Like there might be not big difference, but what if like okay, like with Tesla, you have people investing in the company, and there are like like thousands of people investing in that company, right? But with NFT, what if what if like the the, the number of the people who can own that thing is like very limited, you know? I guess there's a difference in perception. Like yeah, if there yeah, are yeah. only four I, I, people I, who own that NFT, then I mean that's an arbitrary number, but like still like it's still uh in my head like the idea that this is still non-fungible but in, in your mind is because of the difference between the number like if i yes. open a, op- yes. if i open a company i say four people own this company that it, it kind of makes it is it's yeah. the same idea i, I guess i guess yeah <laughs> like it, that, because i i literally saw the other days that someone was trying to sell ah it's the guy he, i forgot his name he he did this very famous artwork where it's a guy He's wearing like a mask and he's trying to throw a flower instead of a... He's, he's like at the protest and he was trying to throw, throw a flower and that artwork is like so expensive and then he's trying mm-hmm. to make like 10,000 people own that artwork as an NFT. Oh, so... so, so if, like, if you would talk about numbers, then 10,000 is kind of like some, like a company that decide to split the company into like 10,000 stocks. It, it, it's yeah. becoming the same thing but I, I don't know because this is actually a new thing what what you're talking about is a new thing mm-hmm. they, they just started recently to try to share NFT it, I, I, as far as I know like I saw this idea came out just recently so I feel like there's a lot to debate about the 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 purpose of an NFT but I do see it very like it's getting close to what a stock is meant to be mm-hmm. but it might have its its is difference. For example, how would you differentiate between a crypto and and a real money then? Yeah, I mean, you mean the difference between a crypto and a fiat currency? Yeah, and, and yeah, and right? an actual currency. Well, I guess like a, a crypto is more of a well, it has no, um, it has no physical value. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like crypto is only it has a perceived value. You know. Uh, money has a basis, but crypto has a, like the only reason Bitcoin is worth that much is because somebody else is willing to buy it from somebody else for that amount of money. You know, there's more like an agreed value, uh, like, like in other words, decentralized, right? While money, uh, well, it's supposed to be based off something, whether that is gold or an economy or, uh, something of that sort. Yeah. You know? So I don't know if that answer is relevant, like, uh, no, like to your I was question, Kai. Trying to see, like, what's the difference between like this digital thing, uh, uh, the this this the relationship relationship between this digital thing versus like something in the real world. But but by the way, I feel like besides these these artworks in NFT, there's just so mm-hmm. much more to this like explore in NFT because NFT yeah, is basically 100%. a blockchain tied to an object. Mm-hmm. Right, it's a blockchain tied to an object, any any digital object. So it doesn't yes. necessarily needs to be artwork. It could be like we talked about before, like a a, a location in the metaverse. So people are mm-hmm. buying, there like someone in in my country, they they spend ten thousand dollars buying a land inside Sandbox, which is, uh, as far as I know, it's like a game, like a metaverse game, mm-hmm. which there's there's is like a open world or something like that. So yeah. people could buy land. It's not just artwork. They can buy music and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like everything that is physical, it could be digitized. It could be turned into an NFT in the digital world. You yes, know? yes, yes, yes. It's almost like you have turned the physical things into valuable things in the digital world. And you and, kind of and, eliminated this reproducibility. Exactly. And uh, maintain the quality of it. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, I think, a good way to put it. Um, but yeah. Mo- moving, Should we, uh, moving to the meta metaverse like earlier i said we was going to talk about the mm-hmm. uh, rtf uh, rtfkt so mm-hmm. i just told you earlier that nike bought this this company that makes like objects for the metaverse and what mm-hmm. i see is that they make shoes and stuff they make shoes and and characters like heads very cool mm-hmm. like like one of my friend he he bought an nft from them it's like a character and just like a head and he's eating like a candy or something like that mm-hmm. basically these company they're just producing artwork that are limited but is 
somehow usable inside the metaverse. So in, in a way, I feel like their NFT is kind of changing the purpose of art and it's giving even more meaning to art. Because before when we talk about art is something maybe just a painting or just uh, like if I draw a character, right, mm -hmm. in, in the real world, you cannot really do much with it. But in NFT world, it's like you can be that character that you make and mm -hmm. then you can walk around in the metaverse. So it kind of has a new purpose to it, right? And if the mm -hmm. character that you bought is made by, uh, from what I see, is a very famous Japanese artist called Takashi Murakami. He makes mm -hmm. these series of clone X NFTs. All of them is just like one out of one. So it's extremely valuable, but it is an artwork at the same time. So it's basically, if you love this artist, you can be his character that he make and walk around the metaverse. So it's like a, like a, something that's, you can say it's out of this world. Like you never thought that you can be a character of someone that you really admire and use it as a, like a, 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 a identity inside a digital world, you know? I think, I think it's like a, it's a representation you're choosing. And this goes back, like Gary Vee talked about this. He said like human beings have always wanted to represent themselves, like like the clothes that you wear, like the, 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 the haircut that you have, or the, the way you choose to buy things and buy clothes and, uh, buy your shoes. You know, it's yeah. all about representation and identity, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, Gary Vee said that actually people are going to want to do that in the metaverse, right. In, in the digital world. And this is what we are seeing happening, right? Like you, you choose to represent yourself and have a certain character in the metaverse, you know, and, and the possibilities are limitless in that uh, world, right? Like you can do whatever you want, you know? And so it, it, it's kind of like a transfer from like, this physical representations that we have nowadays and mm -hmm. our identity into a digital identity that we are creating for ourselves. Exactly. And, and I feel like this thing has been happening before NFT even exists. Because if you look at uh, like CSGO or, or Fortnite, people buy mm -hmm. skins for their character. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you know much about Fortnite. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can yeah. buy like Thanos or you, you like Travis Scott. You can be yeah. certain characters and the only difference is that Fortnite is still like a battle royale game. So you have to shoot, you have to play, you have to do things. There's a goal. But in the metaverse, you can own these skins, but you just need to walk around and just socialize with people. You don't have to play their games. You can do whatever you want with the skin, mm -hmm. the skin that you have. And back in Fortnite, you know, they make most of their money. I'm, I'm almost like 100% of their money through skins. They sell skins of the character. So those skins are what nft is right now you just buy skins mm -hmm. for your character and then you can yeah, yeah. whatever you want so this idea i yeah. feel like it's always been there and people always wanted to like you said like identify themselves as the way they 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 want it to be whatever they want to be they can just be the, themselves in the, in the meta world mm -hmm. yeah totally yeah but yeah um should we move on to the next one yeah yeah sure which is uh, the last one, uh, which is like updatable NFTs over time, you know? So uh, so I, I talked to you, Kai, about this topic previously, and you didn't quite like, uh, I don't want to say like you didn't get it, but like you were kind of like hesitant, like what, what is that even? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how. Uh, yeah, but okay, <laughs> let me put it to you in this way, right? So like in reality, right? Let's say you buy a like you buy a land right in a certain neighborhood mm -hmm. you know and that land uh you hoping that this land would increase its value over time mm -hmm. right and the time passes and people come over to that neighborhood a lot of people come from different places they build other uh houses and this place becomes really important right yeah. and it becomes really popular mm -hmm. over time and it, it starts to become lively and you know it becomes like this, this neighborhood that you bought land in becomes very valuable. Yes. You know, and after a while, the price, the price of that real estate that you bought, the land that you bought increases, mm -hmm. you know, and that land that you just bought now, like has a, for instance, maybe a double the price, you know, and it's almost like you have made an investment in that land, you know, and the same thing could be spot on into NFTs. So 
you 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 know you buy an art an artwork and that artwork evolves over time you know just like that land have evolved you know it increases its value and it's almost like it's an investment just like that land you know and the artwork that you bought you know and nfts are the exact same thing you know you buy an artwork and it gets updated by the artist hence an updated nft you know and as a result that artwork becomes more complex and it has evolved and its price increases you know and the exact same thing like it's almost like a like a, an investment i i the, the reason why i feel, i kind of hesitant is because maybe it's because i haven't seen anything like this in the real world hmm. like if you can think of any what do you art, mean? artwork that people will update it for you in real real world what what, what would it be like Yes, you're right. There hasn't been a lot of examples, but I, I wanted to use like the 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 land example as a, like a metaphor. Yeah, good. Right. Because that the, the well. land is not an artwork, though. Yes, yes, it is not an artwork, but also I can see the exact same concept being applied to NFTs. It has increased in value due to uh, like outside sources affecting it. You know, and the exact same thing with an artwork, like you, you bought it and actually maybe the, the the value of the artwork might decrease, you know, not necessarily increase, but it could change based of the artwork changing that uh, NFT or changing that artwork, you know. So like maybe, maybe like you buy one artwork and you have like after a while that artist like increases that collection, increases the artworks and then you have, for instance, maybe artworks and now the you have a collection of artworks. You know, it's almost like a, also a subscription to a Patreon. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I was going to say, I feel like it, it could be like, because I only can see this happen unless the artist mm -hmm. gets benefit from it as well. So if it's like a subscription, meaning that you have to pay to the artist every, mm -hmm. you know, over a period of time, then I feel like it's possible because from, from a, like a, like a business standpoint for the standpoint mm -hmm. i feel like if you paid me the money already i'm done with the work i'm not going to do more work for for nothing so unless i can get benefit from the the update then i'm not going to do it because what yeah. kind of benefit am i going to get if i update it like if my the artwork that i sold you become more expensive what benefit do i get yeah but what if you said like okay pay me for this artwork you know, and I'm going to update this artwork for the span of a year. You know, so, so it's you, almost you, like you a would fun... put a cap on it, though. You will put a cap on on the, the the time limit. It's like it's not like I'm going to update it forever. But I think I think the ideas there is interesting, and at the same time, I th yeah yeah yeah. There's a there's a limited time, but I think what what creates like this mystery, right? Like, what is this artwork going to be after a while? You know, and that NFT, the artwork is being updated over time for a year, and at the end of that year, it might its price might be increased. So you couldn't you, you couldn't know? go back to what it was before after the update, then. Yes. So if it becomes something I didn't you you don't like, then there's no going back. Yes, but also oh. that like this interesting idea then becomes you know valuable. I I you know? I do. It doesn't that, matter do whether you like it. Or yeah, yeah. Not. I, I what understand. And the idea, I, I feel the like concept. it might not be be solely like artwork. It could be something else. Like for example, okay, I just mm -hmm. have an idea, and I'm sure okay. this has never been talked before. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, like I do agree. If there's a if you put a time cap on on that, then I'm buying it. I'm buying the NFT just because mm -hmm. you, you said that you're gonna upgrade it. So or actually, it could be a subscription model, actually, like yeah, yeah, what yeah. you said. Yeah. You know? Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna say my idea. Okay. Okay. I feel like if in the metaverse there will be pets, like a dog, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying your dog is gonna grow up every month. So every month okay. your your dog your pet in the metaverse is gonna grow up. So obviously it has to grow up. Then you basically you're paying for your dog to live for two years in the NFT world, and after that two years, maybe it will just become something else. I don't know, but it will just stop evolving. <laughs> It's basically like a Pokemon, you know. I'll give you st three stages of involvement, uh, ev like evolving. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Yeah. So, so your your NF your NFT pet is gonna gonna change three times, like like a like a Pokemon. So uh, it grows up. Yeah, and uh, because I haven't seen anyone talking about like NFT pets, but I a hundred percent guarantee you, I hundred percent, I'm so sure they're gonna be NFT pets. And and probably what you said about like these these uh 
the, this updating thing might be applied mm-hmm. to that concept. Yeah, man, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like a plant. I don't know. Maybe you bought a plant in in the metaverse, and you want this plant to grow into a tree, but it takes three years for it to grow to a tree. So the artist maybe he already drew like the full, f- the 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 growth of the plant, but the, he's gonna only give it to you over a period of time. Mm. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Yeah, but 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 also I think that's a like okay, like that's a very good idea, but I think it's a little different to. Uh, what, what I was about. talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, which is I like I think you're thinking about is, is is it like something that oh I I'm updating just when I when I want to not not that it's like fully planned. I think it's fully planned. So uh, I think what I'm talking about is like I like this artist. I really trust his vision, and I like all of his work. Mm-hmm. You know, and I I, I want to buy like a kind of a like this artist has this special thing that you know he's going to sell me an artwork and I'm going to buy that artwork with the mystery in mind that this artwork might change over time. You know, it gets updated, you know? So, so based on the, might get based better. on the initial visual though, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Huh. But you love the artist. You love his work, you know? Okay. So you're not necessarily disappointed in what he's going to make, you know? I actually, For after this conversation, I kind of start to see it see the logic like kind of like <laughs> see see the idea behind it i i do yeah, find yeah. it possible though i, I yeah. think it's quite have it, you ever heard of people man. talking about it though yeah i've heard i've heard uh i think gary v talked about this and there oh, are really? a couple of people oh. who have talked about this yeah 